Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Malifaux and Game 4 of Under the Hanging Tree Strength of Fallen 2017 Tournament. Finally, finally, I have managed to get myself off of Table 6 and into the dizzy heights of Table 5, right next to it. And I'm facing off against Fionor's Hamlin. Seems to be the first game I remember to take a deployment picture for, good stuff. Uh, so the terrain are uh, impassable houses uh, blocking hard cover. Everything else is soft cover height 1, apart from this, which will be height 2, I guess, and blocking. For this, I've taken Sebastian with Those Are Not Ours, McMorning with Plastic Surgery, Decaying Aura, and Moonlighting, a Nurse, the Zombie Chihuahua, a Performer, the Carrion Emissary with McMorning's Conflux, Rafkin, and another Performer. A raid against us, we have Rusty Alice, Ashes and Dust, Hamlin, with Tools of the Tyrant, The Piper, and Survivalist. Next to him is Johan, and then behind the house is an obedient wretch, Stolen, and a couple of rats. There's quite a lot of interacting in this scheme pool, and I know Hamlin denies that very well. Um, so I'm not going to do Claim Jump, because it's so easy for him to block with models or eat with Rat Kings. Same thing for Leave Your Mark. I really did think about Last Stand. But with Hamlin's Lures and Obeys, I figure it's going to be quite tricky to keep um, all three of my guys standing. And Hamlin can just control act uh, you know, his activation count so much by merging rats together and sacrificing things that I'm just not happy taking that. So that leaves Frame for Murder, good old Frame for Murder, and Recover Evidence. I figure by now, word must have got around that I use Rafkin for the Frame for Murder target every game. So I decided to switch things up a bit and... I did consider putting it on Sebastian, but I find he really doesn't actually die that often, so I'm putting it on the Carrion Emissary, in the hope that my opponent will fall for what I'm thinking of as a double bluff. Recover evidence isn't fantastic, um, given the number of models and where they can be, uh, that kind of flexibility Hamlin has, he could end up putting those markers in quite um, awkward positions for me. But the Rat Kings can't eat them, and again, I've got my performers. And in combination with the Emissary and the Nurses Take Your Meds, I could potentially be getting some distance. So, let's see how it works out. Turn 1, uh, my opponent basically activates nothing but rats until I'm all activated. So I put Poison on M M morning, get the Camion Emissary up, and use his shards and this barrier as protection from Hamlin's lures and basically just walk things up, make them defensive. The performers are pulling up other models, and it looks like I've injectioned the nurse up to come with me and forgot to drop the scheme marker. So once I'm all done, Hamlin obeys uh, Rusty Anis and Ashes and Dust up to the centre line, where they both claim, um, I think, maybe those two markers uh, for the squatters' rights. Always good if you can get them claimed on the first turn. Johan's following them up quite close behind to this kind of area, um, and the rats have been merging into Rat Kings, and I think there's a Rat King over here now. And Hamlin gets another stolen. Turn 2, I haven't really used any cards, and so with Soul Stoning, my hand is now amazing. I'm holding the Black Joker here so I can have something to discard or uh, go defensive with, but with any luck I can hold on to it and go this turn and next turn without worrying about it making an appearance. So at the end of last turn, McMorning Poison pushed out to here, and I quite like that. Gives him a lot of threat, and um, he isn't too vulnerable. As soon as I can, the Chihuahua runs out and uh, poisons uh, Johan, and has subsequently been lured off by Hamlin later on in the turn. I think my opponent spends uh, or passes a lot of activations just activating rats first off this turn. So I've got uh, Carrion Emissary out, I'm attacking Rusty Alice, not doing very much, I'm putting down the shards. Again, just trying to keep, keep corpses up within range of Sebastian, blocking Johan's charge lane on him. Again, trying to disguise Frame for Murder. Sebastian summons in a dog off the first turn zombie and um, lowers Johan's defense a bit. we got some Ratkins forming, coming over to try to secure these squat markers. Rafkin runs out and then 1 AP charges Johan um, with his uh, minus 1 defense and poison. I pretty easily bring him down to his last wound. And this is really nice because I've got both Sebastian and McWarning uh, with their catalyst auras on him. And in fact Sebastian's induction aura. And so long as McWarning stays within one, uh, 8 inches of him, 
As soon as he activates, he'll die and give me a dog, which will be really nice. Give me quite a lot of control in the centre here. Unfortunately, Ashes and Dust does not take this tempting, tempting turkey bait and instead goes for Sebastian charging away. God, I hate this thing. But I do get off fairly lightly um, as I'm dipping into my soul stones. So I use this performer to lure my other performer up so she can run and grab the squat marker. But Ashes isn't done yet. Um, Rusty Alice goes, uh, maybe plinks a couple of shots off, but um, ultimately gives Ashes reactivate with her burnout ability or whatever it's called. So Ashes goes again, kills the nurse, uh, gets this uh, abomination and puts a little bit more damage on Sebastian, who's now really starting to feel the heat, not that many wounds left. But that reactivate causes Ashes and Dust to sacrifice itself, which is pretty important given that it was framed for murder. So it splits into the Ashen Core and the Dust Storm, and then at the end of the game, by the end of the turn, it uh, is reunited itself back in almost exactly the same position. But summon models count as different models from the ones that uh, you may have started the game with, so this Ashes and Dust doesn't have Frame for Murder on it. One of these simple rules, uh, or subtle rules, sorry, that can uh, catch you out, and uh, my opponent wasn't aware of this at this point, and so yeah, so pretty consequential uh, move there. So I think I've only got uh, McMorning left to activate by this point. He walks up, grabs this squat marker, and then walks back to ensure that uh, you know even if something kills Sebastian or uh, you know blocks his line of sight, Johan is still done for. And then I injection the performer onto the squat marker just to try to protect it from these Rat Kings. So yeah, Johan is forced to activate and dies, and I get a dog who just runs around to stand next to this squat marker, and we end this turn with a point apiece. Turn 3, always nice to have a high crow uh, for your performers. We both declare the, uh, what's it called, recover evidence scheme this turn, and so yes, there's a lot of evidence markers put down. So I decide to concentrate all my evidence here. There isn't a lot of choice because uh, my, all my models are here, but I figure if I have them all in the same place and I can control this zone, then I can block uh, you know, him getting points. It's not great, but it's all I've got. My opponent on the other hand has a lot more flexibility and so puts his markers down around the periphery. Sigh. I get the initiative, and seeing Sebastian's not long for this world, I summon a dog or two before I think the abomination puts him down. That was upsetting. Looks like I grab this squat marker with my dog and move it over to engage Rusty Alice. He looks like he's sacrificed his rat king for a rat catcher and a rat and taken this... Um, Squat marker, and Ashes and Dust has jammed itself right up in my business. This was really, really annoying. It's very hard to escape combat with this thing, and I need to be trying to block these markers and have someone come off and uh, try to get these ones. So I decided to get the Carrion Emissary to fly over here and attack Ashes and Dust, so I've just got to try to get rid of him this turn. I put down my shards to block this uh, Rat King from getting anywhere near us. Uh, you know, it's going to have to go the long way around. Probably should have camped him on this squat marker in hindsight. My memory is getting a little hazy, but I think Rusty Alice gets obeyed to try to kill the dog and fails, and Ashes gets obeyed to try to kill some stuff, and somehow we end up with an abomination in the mix here. And I proceed to super fuck things up. So um, this performer goes and uh, lures Rafkin into range so that I don't have to waste an AP moving up to Ashes and Dust. And then I try to paralyze this Rat King. Well, basically, really, all I want is for it to be in range of morning, because I've got a plan to kill it. Um, so I lure it in, and think, oh, you know, why not? I can paralyze it, and cheat in my high crow. But the thing can't make it in base to base because of the terrain, and so I completely waste that card, and I feel like a total twat. But at least it's in range to hit. So this is showing me remembering the Chihuahua and running it up and poisoning everybody apart from Hamlin who can just choose not to get poisoned, which I think is hilarious because those stolen only have one wound, but really it's not achieving me that much. Rusty Alice is continuing to fail to kill the dog and I think Rafkin is failing to do anything against Ashes and Dust, maybe, maybe a little bit of damage. So I've got my performer up over here and taken the squat marker and I enact my plan with McMorning. So the Abomination meant that I couldn't use my zero action, which means no expunge, which makes me very, very unhappy. 
So I attack the abomination and leave it on one wound, um, so it's still not dead. I then Rancid Transplant the Rat King, putting a billion poison on it, which also takes the last wound off the um, abomination. I then hit the Rat King a bit and pop it with the expunge, getting the fresh construct nice and free. My canine remains, what well, that was over here, has managed to escape this um, abomination and gone up to stand in base contact with the squatter marker. But unfortunately there's nothing I can do to take it and deny my opponent the point. At the end of the turn things look like this. I've got my zombies just standing on the squat markers trying to protect them as best I can. He's turned his stolen into rats and then merged them into a rat king that's then come forward over here. Oh, it looks like I was wrong. Rusty Alice did kill the dog. Uh, thankfully didn't get another abomination out of it. My flesh construct has run up, not quite getting into within base contact of the um, evidence marker, and McMorning poison pushes out over to help hold this squat marker against this vicious rat that has come running over. So we're going to turn four, and time is getting pretty short now. There have been a lot of activations and a lot of thinking that's had to go on. It's been a really exciting game. So it looks like. Uh, Rusty Alice has gone and killed a zombie and got a, an abomination. I'm not sure how she did that, but I presume my opponent had the desolate soul upgrade um, and it's just not in this picture. And so basically there are abominations converging together and I don't like the looks of that. Ashes and Dust kills everyone around him apart from Rafkin. Sigh. So Rafkin shanks him back, killing him, and at this point we discover Fionor can't claim a uh, frame for murder. Which is massive because I think we're neck and neck at this point and the uh, the tournament is drawing to a close. He's managed to, sh managed to schnaffle up two of my evidence markers and my performer and my flesh constructs have got two for me. Oh my goodness it's tense. So last activations are called. McMorning kills the rat, he doesn't really need to but I figured I'd do it anyway. And takes this claim marker, gets over to the... Um, Rat dude, who I think has don't mind me and so could have taken this one um, regardless. And you know, obviously if I'd had more time I'd have tried to go for the rat kill and the claim of the dog and then kill the rat um, rat catcher with McMorning. But this is I think the best I can do to ensure I score and try to deny my opponent a point. But then Hamlin goes and obeys I think the rat catcher, the rat king to get out of um, the carrying emissary's engagement, presumably I failed that disengaging strike, and he picks up an evidence marker and uh, the changes claims the squat marker, swinging the game for the outcasts with that last vital point. So in the final scores, the outcasts got three points for squatters' rights, no points for frame for murder, and three points for recover evidence. The resurrectionists got three points for squatters' rights. No points for Frame for Murder, and only two points for Recover Evidence, making this game 6-5 to the Outcasts. What a fun game, that was a real nail-biter. But well done to my opponent, even with that, uh, that loss of two points, or three points from Frame for Murder. He was able to maintain uh, you know, just a little bit more control over the game, and I think this, uh, this final board state is, um, is much stronger for him. As with Hamlin's obeys and interaction auras, I, uh, I doubt I'll be able to get to these uh, scheme markers in the, in the final turn, or deny his uh, last squatter point with the uh, emissary alone. So yes, congratulations to him. I wasn't sure I'd taken the right schemes uh, immediately after the game, but in hindsight I think I had. Um, but it is a hard call on uh, who to put Frame for Murder on, so I'll have to think about that in future. So, at the end of the event, I finish with two wins, two losses, and in 10th place out of 22, and best representative of the Dark Sphere meta. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Had some really fantastic games, all of them were pretty close, and I, I am sorry about the photo quality, it's been pretty bad, but I have got to prioritise the game, so I hope you understand. Anyway, that's been the tournament. And I've got another one coming up soon, so those will probably be the next games you see as well. Wish me luck. Take care. <laughs>